What's up, guys? This is another Algebra 2 instructional lesson uh, with Mr. Gaines here as we continue our work on the analytic parabola. So where we left off in the last section of the notes, with our last examples, was trying to find and graph uh, parabolas based on a definition including the focus and the directrix. So I'm just going to go with a little bit of a refresher here and start with the equation of an analytic parabola. So this is y equal to 1 over 4d times the quantity x minus h squared, quantity squared, plus k. Okay. So this is what the parabola is going to look like with some horizontal and some vertical shifts. I'm actually going to make a change to d. I'm going to change this to x squared plus 2x minus 8y. So let me make that change real quick. So again, part D reads x squared plus 2x minus 8y. I wanted to make sure, I did tell you guys that we wouldn't have any horizontal shifts with, um, or we wouldn't have any shifts with horizontal parabolas, so I wanted to make sure to keep that accurate. So let's go ahead and take a look at C. C is x squared minus 6x equal to negative 12y plus 15. So what we see here is that the x is being squared. And so we know that this is going to be a vertical parabola. So what we want to do is we want to get y by itself. So what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to add 12y to the right side of the equation. And then I'm going to subtract x squared. And I'm going to add 6x to move it to the right side. So now I have 12y on the left, and I have everything else on the right. Now, what I might want to do at this point in time is divide by y or 12 to get y completely by itself. But what we may notice is that we're in almost standard form for a, a parabola or quadratic equation. Standard form is okay for us, except for it doesn't tell us much information about the focus of the directrix. To get this into, or to find information about the focus and directrix, what we need to do is we need to put it into vertex form. So I could divide by everything by 12 and then work to get it into vertex form. It's going to be a little bit more complicated if I do that because that's going to give me a lot of fractions when I go through the method of completing the square. So let's keep the 12 with the y and then we'll take care of that 12. So what I'm going to do is what I just hinted at. I'm going to complete the square with a version over to the right. This is what we have done before in the past. We've grouped the first two terms of that trinomial. I'm getting I'm kind of ignoring that 12y for right now. And I'm going to complete the square with those two terms to get it into the vertex form. So I'm going to have 12y equal to, I'm going to factor out that negative in order to complete the square. So negative x squared plus, or sorry, negative x squared, now that would leave me with a minus 6x, and then plus 15. I need to figure out what my c value is, and remember c is equal to b, which in this case is negative 6, divided by 2, and that quantity squared, which is 9. So I'm going to add 9 inside my parentheses. I'm going to subtract outside of my parentheses. But remember, this negative coefficient gets distributed to this 9, so I'm going to subtract a negative 9 outside of my parentheses, which is the same as adding 9. So if I simplify this, 12y equal to negative x squared minus 6x plus 9 in parentheses, and then plus 24 outside of the parentheses. I can break my trinomial down that's inside of a parentheses to a binomial that's squared. So this would be x minus 3. Remember the, the second term is always half of that b value. And now finally I can get the y by itself. So I can get the y by itself by dividing everything by 12. So I'm going to divide everything by 12 which means I'm going to put the fraction out in front of my parentheses. So negative 1 12th and then my parentheses x minus 3, quantity squared, and I don't want to forget to divide the 24 by 12, I need plus 2. So I'm dividing everything by 12 in this step above. So what this gives me is this gives me my equation. Okay. Now I want to use this equation to find out my key information, my vertex, my focus, my directrix, my axis of symmetry, and then graph those. So there I have my coordinate plane ready to graph and all my key information listed here. 
Now remember the vertex is found by the horizontal and vertical shifts. So x minus h, I have a shift to the right 3. So this is a shift to the right 3, and this is a shift up 2. So my vertex is going to sit at 3, 2. So I'm going to go right 3, I'm going to go up 2, and there's my vertex. Let me make this a little bit longer. Now my axis of symmetry is running through my vertex, so it's going to be a vertical line, x equals 3. This parabola is going to open down because we have a negative leading coefficient, so it's been reflected. So I'm going to go ahead and put that dashed line coming down from there. Now my focus here is going to again be the same distance from my vertex that dir the directrix is. And that vertex is d in the equation here. So 1 over 12 is equal to 1 over 4d. If I cross multiply, 4d is equal to 12, then d is equal to 3. So my focus is 3 units down from my ver vertex. 3 units down because, again, this parabola opens down. So it would be at 3, negative 1. My directrix here would be three units up from the vertex. So one, two, three. This one is a horizontal line. So it would be y equals five. Now, if I wanted to plot more points on here, I could. But this is good enough for what we're doing right here. So my graph. would look something like this. Okay, We could incorporate some of the other ideas to find x-intercepts and y-intercepts, but all we're asked here is to graph based on the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the focus, and the directrix. So again, we want to sketch out as much of a parabola as we can. The goal is to try to make all points equidistant from the focus and the directrix. My graph is not drawn to scale, so it, the curve is off a little bit there as well. So this is how we can complete 1c. We have to complete the square to get it into the vertex formula. Then we can find our information about the focus, directrix, and axis of symmetry and vertex based on that equation. Now, if you kind of get what's going on here, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can complete part D. Notice again, I did change the Y's to X's and the X's, the X to a Y. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to finish there. Notice again that X squared is, or the X is being squared, so this is going to be a vertical parabola. So I want to get Y by itself. So I'm going to keep this negative 8y over here on the left. Now, you could have moved it to the right, and that would be okay. And then I'm going to subtract x squared. I'm going to subtract 2x. I'm going to keep the 25 over on the right. So I'm keeping the negative 8y on the left, and I'm keeping everything else on the right. I'm actually going to divide by negative 1 here, because that's going to make this problem just a little bit easier. So x squared plus 2x minus 24. You definitely don't have to divide by that negative one to start, um, but eventually you're going to, and so you would end up getting the same answer towards the end. What it's going to do is make my process of completing the square a little easier. So now I need to complete the square. I'm not going to divide by 8 because I don't want to work with fractions yet. I'm going to complete the square over here on the right. So I'm going to Take my x squared and 2x and group those. I'm going to find out what my c value is by taking b, dividing that by 2, and squaring that, which is 1. So I'm going to add 1 inside the parentheses, and then I'm going to subtract 1 outside of the parentheses. So this is going to give me y equal to x, sorry, 8y. I want to keep that 8 there. x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 25. Sorry, I wrote this. I wrote this all down wrong. This should be a 25, and this should be a 26. So minus 20. Sorry. 
minus 25 there, and 25 minus 1 would be minus 26. Now, I can rewrite my trinomial as x plus 1 quantity squared minus 26, and then divide by 8. So y would equal 1 8 times x plus 1 quantity squared minus 26 divided by 8. So I'm going to go over here to my graphing calculator. I'm going to do 26 divided by 8. And that's going to give me a negative 3.25. If this were a rounded answer, I'd go ahead and list the fraction, but this is okay here. If you wanted to write this as a fraction, that would be okay. That fraction would be 13 over 4. Let's just write it as 13 over 4. But know that this is negative 3.25. So now my vertex is my horizontal shift, left 1, and down 13 over 4, which is just beyond 3. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that. 1, 2, 3, 4, down, left 1. It's going to be just beyond 3 on the y-axis. So there's my vertex. My axis of symmetry is going to go through the x value of negative 1. It's got a leading coefficient that's positive, so my axis of symmetry essentially is going to go up here. Technically, it's symmetric on both sides, but I'm going to sketch it up because that's where my graph is going to go. My focus, to find my focus, I need to find the distance d. So 1 over 8 is equal to 1 over 4d. If I want to cross multiply here, 4d is equal to 8, and then d is 2. So my focus is 2 units above negative 13 over 4. So negative 13 over 4, take that plus 2, would be negative 1.5 or 5.4. So this would be negative 1, negative 5 over 4. Or just beyond 1, negative 1. My directrix then is going to be 2 units down. I can make this a little bit longer. 2 units down from the vertex. So this is a great, but this would be, if I wanted to do this in my calculator, negative 13 over 4 minus 2, which would be negative 21 over 8. If you put that as a decimal, that would be fine too. And then I can go from here. I can go ahead and sketch in my curve. So we'd have something that looks like that. So here we can see that the process of completing the square is going to allow us to write this equation into vertex form, and then we can use the vertex form to find the focus in the directrix. Now this is how we find key features if we don't, or if we're given the equation. What if we don't know the equation and need to find the key features? So that takes us to problem number two. Problem number two is the long way to complete this. I'm going to show you a shortcut eventually, but problem number two says for each of the following, derive the standard equation for a parabola matching the criteria. So what we have to do is we have to use this information to derive the equation. What deriving the equation means is we're going to rely on the definition. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and sketched out a graph for 2a where it gave us a focus of 3, 0, and a directrix of y equals 4. Now, how I know that this parabola opens downward is, sorry, this is y equals 4, not y equals 0. But how I know that this parabola opens downward is because my directrix has a y value of 4, my focus has a y value of 0. So vertically, my directrix is above my focus. So this parabola has to open towards the vertex or towards the focus with the vertex in between the focus and the directrix. Now, to get to the standard equation, it goes back to the definition, and you have to know or understand the definition. If I have any point on this, let's call this point P. P is the same distance from the focus that it is from the directrix. Again, this is not drawn to scale. So let's let P have coordinates x, y. 
and let's let uh, this point where P, the distance from P to the directrix be D. It's going to have the same coordinate, but it's going to have the Y coordinate of the directrix, which is 4. So we kind of worked with this with all variables at the beginning of this lesson, the beginning of these notes. Now we're, we've got some numbers to put in there. So again, back to the definition. The distance from the focus to the point, PF, is the same as the distance from the directrix to the point, PD. So I can use the distance formula, which we remember is the square root of x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. I can use this distance formula to go ahead and substitute in my values and simplify to give me an equation that I'm going to be able to write in standard form. Now, this is a significant amount of work, but it's a lot of algebra steps here. So, PF, substituting into the distance formula, I'm going to have x minus 3, subtracting my two x's, that's going to be quantity that's squared, it's going to be under the square root, and then I'm going to have plus y, my two y values for p and f are y and 0, so y minus 0 would just be y quantity squared, so y squared. I'm going to do the same thing with pd. pd is going to be the x values subtracted, so x minus x would be 0, so I could have 0 here, I'm not going to worry about that, then y minus 4, and that quantity squared. So I substitute in the x's and the y's into the distance formula, and I simplified this a little bit as we went through there. Now I want to simplify my equation further. So both of these have square roots. I can square both sides essentially, which would give me x minus 3 quantity squared plus y squared equal to y minus 4 quantity squared. Now this is an equation for our parabola but we want to simplify this equation. So if I square x minus 3, that's going to be x squared minus 6x plus 9. And you would take x minus 3 and times x minus 3 and distribute, or you can use that rule. And then we would have plus the y squared there still. And this would be equal to y squared minus 8y plus 16. Now, again, I can see that this is a vertical parabola. So if it's a vertical parabola, I want to get y by itself. So I'm going to get all the y's to one side. I'm going to get everything else to the other side. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to subtract y squared from both sides. Then I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. So what this is going to give me is x squared minus 6x plus 25 equal to negative 8y. Finally, I want to get y by itself. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 8. So these negative 8s would cancel out, which would leave me with y, which I'm going to write on to the left, is equal to negative 1 8 x squared minus, or sorry, plus, because we'd have negative 6 divided by 8, 3 over 4x minus 25 over 8. If you wanted to put those in decimals, as long as they're not rounded, that would be okay, but fractions are okay as well. And so here we have the standard form for the equation that's going to have a focus of 3, 0, and the directrix of y equals 4. Now, checking this, I'm going to show you briefly how we can check this in our graphing calculator. You can't check everything in the graphing calculator, but we can get a concept of, is this equation what I want it to look like? So I'm going to go ahead and type the equation into my calculator, and then I'm going to look at the graph. And what I see here is a downward opening parabola. That's good. What I also may notice here is if I want to find the vertex here, I can find that maximum point using a left and right bound. It's at, again, this rounds a little bit, but at 3, negative 2. 3, negative 2 would be, sorry, we have a mistake here. Type this in incorrectly. 
So 3, negative 2 would not be directly in between 3, 0, and y equals 4. So somewhere along the line, I have made a mistake in my math work. Ah, here. So this is a great example of why we might want to check what we did. Here, I had 9 minus 16. Some of you probably caught this. This is not actually 25. This should be a minus 14. So then when I take negative 8, or sorry, negative 14 divided by negative 8, this should give me a positive 7 over 4 here at the end. So hopefully you were able to catch that. Um, but if you didn't, that's why we want to use this graphing calculator to check our work. So now I can go back and I can fix this as plus 7 over 4. And now take a look at my graph. And now find my vertex. And see that I have another mistake. Basic math here, simple math. I'm just making mistakes on the simple math. I don't know where I got negative, positive 14 from, but um, 9, this 9 minus 16 is actually a negative 7. So at the end, I should have positive 7 over 8. Now let's try this, and hopefully we've gotten this correct this time. So now if I put it into my graphing calculator, now I can take a look at my graph. The downward opening parabola as we expect it to be, my maximum point or my vertex is at 3, 2. Again, it rounded a little bit. 3, 2. 3, 2 would be directly in between the focus and the directrix on that axis of symmetry. So I believe that I have this correct. Okay, so I know that I have the correct vertex point based on the focus of the directrix. It's opening the right way. So I'm pretty confident that this equation is the correct equation here. So this is deriving the standard equation for a parabola given the criteria that was allowed to us. Now let's take a look at number two. We've changed the information that was given. Now we know a focus and a directrix. So let me sketch a diagram for this. So again, I have a parabola that's opening down. I know this because my vertex is above my focus. So if I plot my vertex or, or, or just imagine a plot of my vertex and my focus, my parabola would have to go around that focus. Now, I didn't put this on a coordinate plane. I just drew a rough sketch. I know my directrix here is going to be above the vertex somewhere. And what I don't know is the value for the directrix. But I should be able to come up with this pretty quickly here. I know that the distance between my focus and my vertex is 3, which means my distance between my vertex and my directrix also has to be 3. So my directrix is 3 units above my vertex, meaning it has a y value of 7. Now I can complete this problem essentially the same way that I completed the last problem. I can put a p here, and this p is going to have any x y coordinate pair. You can put that distance between P and F has to be the same as from P to the directrix. So if D is on my directrix, it has X as the X value. It's the same as my point, And it has the Y value of 7 since it's on my directrix. So by definition, PF, the distance from the point to the focus, is equal to PD, the distance from the point to the directrix. So now, substitute and to the distance formula for these points. So P, F, my X coordinates are X and negative 2. So I would have the square root of X minus negative 2, which is the same as X plus 2 quantity squared. Plus my Y coordinates are Y and 1. So Y minus 1 quantity squared. For P, D. I would substitute in my x coordinates for p are p and d are x and x, so x minus x would be zero quantity squared. So I don't need to include that. My y coordinates would be y minus seven. Now, 
I can go ahead and simplify these expressions. If I square both sides, that eliminates the square root. So I would have x quantity square, x plus 2 quantity squared times y minus 1 quantity squared equal to y minus 7 quantity squared. This is, again, an equation for the parabola, but I want to simplify this equation. So I'm going to square x plus 2. That gives me x squared plus 4x plus 4. I'm going to square y minus 1 quantity squared, so that gives me y squared minus 2y plus 1. And I'm going to square y minus 7 as well, which gives me y squared minus 14y plus 49. Now, I want to simplify what I can simplify and get all the y's to one side, everything else to the other side. So I'm going to just go ahead, go ahead and subtract y squared from both sides to eliminate these. I'm going to add 2y to move that to the right side. I'm going to subtract 49. And then I'm going to combine my like terms. So I have x squared plus 4x. And then I'm going to have 4 plus 1 minus 49. 4 plus 1 is 5 minus 49. Let's make sure I do it correct this time. 4 plus 1 minus 49 should be negative 44. And this is equal to negative 12y. Now I want to divide everything by negative 12 to get y by itself. So y is equal to negative 1 12th x squared. Negative 4 over negative 12 would be negative 1 third x. Minus 44 over minus 12 would be positive 11 over 3. So there I have the standard form for my equation. And let's go ahead and graph it. So negative 1 over 12 x squared minus 1 over 3 x plus 11 over 3. Let's go ahead and take a look at this graph. It is a downward opening parabola as we would expect. Let me find my vertex. So my left bound might be negative 4. My right, let me type that incorrectly, negative 4. My right bound might be 0. My maximum would exist in between there at negative 2, 4, which is what we expect it to be at. Now, I could also check to make sure that um, some of the points line up with uh, the distance from the focus in the vertex, or the focus in the directrix, if you wanted to. But I've got a pretty, I'm pretty confident in what I have here. So this would be the standard equation for the information that they gave us. Now, this is how we derive the standard equation. In the next video, I'm going to show you a shortcut where we can come up with an equation, not the standard equation, but we can come up with an equation at a much easier operation. This is a good place to stop for right now. As always, thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you soon.